Hey guys, welcome to another episode of AD Quick Tips. My name is Frankie Parr and I'm the AD educator here at the hospital. And my name is Nate Davison. I'm a staff nurse here in the emergency department. Today we're here to discuss the care of the hypothermic patient in the emergency department setting. All patients presenting to the emergency department for care will be screened for hypothermia by measuring either an oral or rectal temperature. The doctor will be notified for any patient who is identified as hypothermic. Clinical hypothermia is defined as any core temperature below 95 degrees in a patient who has experienced trauma. Hypothermia protocol will be initiated on any patient who presents to the emergency department with a core temperature that is less than 95 degrees. There are three classifications for hypothermia, mild, moderate, and severe. Mild hypothermia is anywhere between 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Moderate is between 86 degrees and 89.6 degrees Fahrenheit. While severe hypothermia is any core temperature under 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Patients at risk for hypothermia include history of prolonged cold environment exposure, massive blood fluid loss and large fluid requirements, severe head and spinal cord injury, infants and children, geriatric patients, burns, and drowning victims. All patients presenting to the emergency department with major trauma are considered at risk for hypothermia. A core temperature should be obtained on all patients, but be sure to avoid prolonged patient exposure and cover patients with warm blankets as soon as you can. Consider radiant heaters and increase the ambient room temperature when possible. Infuse warm fluids and work with respiratory therapy for warmed oxygen as patient treatment allows. For major transfusion requirements, use the level one fluid infuser with warmer or the Arctic Sun. Use of the bear hugger should also be considered. We'll go over the use of the bear hugger, the Arctic Sun, and the ranger warmer later in this video. For management of the patient presenting with severe hypothermia, consider gastric lavage with warm fluids, warm water enemas, and peritoneal lavage with warm fluids. Keep in mind that any interventions that are invasive for the care of the hypothermic patient should only be implemented with a provider order. For additional information, please reference the University of Louisville Hospital Hypothermic Patient Protocol. Here we are in room nine. Let me show you where you find the bear hugger, Arctic Sun, and the render warmer. Follow me. There is your bear hugger and your Arctic Sun. And here you have four different ranger warmers. So here we are in bay four. Let me show you where you find the different components for each method of warming. Typically they're all grouped together. In door 26 you find the uh, standard flow uh, tubing for the ranger warmer. Door 26 you will also find the uh, bear hugger full body warming blanket. Here you also can find two different types of rectal probes. One of them is connected to um, something similar to an audio jack. And then this probe is connected to the typically that you normally see in our temp, temp sensing pulleys. Also in this tower, you can find the pads for the Arctic Sun. So here we are, bay two. Let's talk Ranger Warmer. Ranger Warmer is important that you plug it in. Once you plug that in, the on button is located on the side of the machine. This Ranger Warmer goes up to 41 Celsius. Then we also have the standard flow cassette. For the hypothermic patient, probably you will use a uh, standard flow. We also have the uh, pressure infuser uh, that you can use with the pressure infuser um, feature of this machine. You slide the cassette prior to priming, that's very important. And then this attaches to the patient. With your primary line primed, connect that to the cassette and the ranger warmer. Make sure that those connections are really tight. This little reservoir attaches to a little holder on the on the ranger warmer. We typically use a extension tubing or extension set for this distal part that will connect to your patient. Again, ensure that the connection is really, really tight. 
you can prime your line and you can already see that the ranger warmer is up to 41 celsius and it's also coming out warm let's discuss the bear hugger and the arctic sun let's start with the bear hugger since it's a little bit less invasive compared to the arctic sun so the bear hugger has three different settings uh, low medium or high and you can use those according to your patient's temperature also there's a hose where it will connect to the blanket the blanket has a diagram that tells you how to place this in a patient. There's a, clearly a divot that will show you where the patient's head should go. Also, towards the bottom of it, there's an opening where you will connect the hose. It's important to note that the plastic piece should point up and never make patient contact with the skin. Connect that. Select your desired temperature and you want to fill up. Really toasty. You can simply cover the bear hugger with a blanket or a simple sheet just to try to capture some of that heat. Now let's go to the Arctic Sun. For educational purposes, we already power up this machine. It takes about a few seconds to power up. Uh, the button is located in the back. Uh, when you first turn on the machine, uh, you have two different settings. You can either do normal thermia or you can do hypothermia. The hypothermia protocol is, is considered what we do when the patient needs to go into therapeutic temperature management. So that's a different whole video. For this purpose, we want to use a normal thermia, meaning that we want to warm up our patients. So you simply hit the screen with the normal thermia. For the Arctic Sun, it's important that you grab the correct uh, temperature probe. We have two different options. You have the rectal probe and the Foley uh, with the temp sensing. Uh, attached to it. This is kind of what that connection looks like. For this case, the patient is considered to be a mild hypothermia. So now let's talk Arctic Sun pad connectors. Uh, we have three different sizes, small, medium, or large. Typically the small goes from a patient that 100 pounds to about 140 and after that you kind of move to the large section, 140 to anything greater than that. In the pads you have a diagram that tells you how to apply and really simplifies the application of the pads to the patient. They have a lower extremity and an upper extremity uh, diagram. Arctic Sun has two main power hoses. They're color coded, blue and white. You have a total of six, because sometimes you're gonna have to use a universal pad. You find the pad, it's blue to blue and white to white. You squeeze, and attach. Now back to the screen of our Arctic Sun. So you will see the patient temperature here located at the screen. You can simply select Celsius or Fahrenheit. Also switches the water temperature, noted there. Also, this allows you to control the temperature of the patient. As a manual control, you can actually time the temperature setting and the time of the um, Therapy, empty the pads, and fill the reservoir. All of those are modes that uh, the machine can simply walk you through. The machine also has a tutorial mode if you are wanting to get more information when it comes to the Arctic Sun. Thanks for watching another episode of ED Quick Tips. As always, if you have any questions, we're here to help.